Hello everybody, my name is Chris Whitmire from the South Carolina State Election Commission and I'm going to show you how to use South Carolina's new paper-based voting system today. So voters are going to find the new voting system very familiar. When you go to your polling place, you're going to check in as normal. The one thing that's different is that after you check in and you're ready to vote, they're going to hand you a blank ballot card. This is a blank piece of paper and then they're going to direct you to a ballot marking device. When you get to the ballot marking device, the most important thing to remember is to insert your ballot card with the corner cut to the right. There's a graphic on the, on the device that instructs you how to do that. But once you get that part, I think that's the hardest part of it, making sure you put that ballot in the right way. It won't take it the other way, it'll reject it. But once you do that, uh, you're in a voting session on a touch screen, very similar to uh, how voters in South Carolina have been voting for the past 15 years. You're going to move through the touch screen, making your selections by touching the screen. Uh, you can change selections if you want to. You hit next to move through the ballot. There's also some features on, on the screen that we didn't have before. Uh, one is a zoom feature that makes the text larger. Uh, there's also a high contrast feature that puts white on black high contrast that is easier for some folks to see. Uh, but you're going to make your selections. Just keep pressing next. And so let me vote for the right one there. There we go. And this is a vote for two. But I'm only going to vote for one on this. I'm going to show you that it, it reminds you if you, if you miss something. Uh, I'm going to skip this office too, just so we can see that. Okay, so this is all very familiar. I get to the end of the ballot. There's a review screen, uh, and this is the first time I'm going to review my ballot. I want to make sure that everything's correct. I get an exclamation point here. That's telling me something is up with this office. I look and it says it's not fully voted. I could have voted for two. So all I have to do is touch that. Go, it takes me directly back to that office say, okay, I could have voted for two. Let me, let me vote for another. Hit next, I'm back at the review screen. I have another issue, I've missed this office. Well, maybe I didn't want to vote for that office. So uh, that's okay with me. I don't, I don't want to vote for that office. Hit next, this is the last office to review. Now, I've reviewed my ballot on the screen. And here's where, uh, this is what, here's where it's a little different than what voters need to understand about the new system is that this ballot marking device isn't recording anything. Um, it is simply helping me mark my ballot. And I'm not pressing vote as we did in the past. I'm pressing print. So the only button here to press is the print card. I'm gonna print my card. My ballot's gonna come back out of the same slot that I put it in. And this is important. I now have my ballot in my hand. And as my votes on it, I'm going to look, make sure that the selections that I made uh, are on here and this is the, what I want to vote because I have not yet voted. All I've done is mark my ballot. I have a nice and clear ballot that election officials uh, have no problem determining what my intent is uh, to vote here. So the next step, on my way out, I'll be directed to the scan and that's where I need to actually cast my ballot. So after you've printed your ballot and you've reviewed it, poll managers will direct you to the scanner and it should be positioned on your way out of the polling place and managers will be there to make sure that no one walks out with the ballot. Uh, but, and they're gonna direct you to place your ballot face down on the green arrow. And we just say face down for privacy so your ballot's not, um, not facing up. But it'll take it any way you put it in. It takes just a second. Um, the scanner tabulates the ballot, counts the, counts the votes on it, and then drops it into a locked ballot box uh, down below. And so, so what voters need to know is that there is this second step and you've got to cast your paper ballot for it to count. Uh, but the other, the, the big deal about the system is that it now has paper. That piece of paper is now in a locked ballot box. At the end of the election, we have a paper record of every voter's voted ballot and we can use that to audit. We can use that to do recounts, and that gives us more confidence in the results of the election. We hope it gives voters more confidence as well. Every device is equipped with 
headphones and a braille embossed controller and um, uh, basically a voter who is blind or visually uh, disabled or who, who can't read or write uh, can vote using an audio ballot. So they listen to their ballot using the headphones and then use these arrows and um, shaped buttons that are they're also braille embossed to, uh, to make selections and the audio gives you feedback and tells you who you voted for. Uh, you review your ballot, all of the same things that you would do on the screen, you're doing uh, through, through the headphones and controller. Uh, also, the uh, system has an input for a sip and puff device and other assistive switches. Also, every ballot marking device is designed to sit on a table. Uh, it's not in a booth uh, and, and, and it's designed to sit on a table that's wheelchair accessible. So, um, most standard table heights are wheelchair accessible, so you place this on a table, uh, you can roll up in a wheelchair and vote uh, at the table.